We just finished this podcast with Dr. Christy Whitbeck, who is the superintendent in Fort Bend ISD. And one of the themes that she talked about that's really important to her organization, to her community, is know your impact. And I sat down after the podcast and I just thought about how so many people don't hear in education the impact they actually had. And I thought about the times I've heard positive impact I had And there was one time in particular that stuck out to me. There was a student in one of my classes who was really interested in basketball, wasn't very good, and I was coaching the high school team at that time. Now, I didn't think he'd be a good basketball player. The the team was very competitive and very intent on, you know, winning a championship. But I encouraged him to try out because I knew I could find a spot for him on the team and I thought it would be hugely beneficial to him to play, to be around um, other people on the team because I know how much of an impact playing sports had for me, not just in an athletic sense, but in a social sense, in a leadership sense, how important that was to me. And he didn't play much. He was on the team. And as the year progressed, he was so beloved by his teammates. And I saw that it had an impact on him in his school experience, had an impact on him, on the team. And I was so, so, so proud. I I remember his name. I remember him very vividly. And it mattered to me that he did well, that he was just felt a camaraderie amongst the people on that team. And so he was always just made me smile, made everyone on that team smile, had a great sense of humor that many people didn't know about until he actually joined that team. As the team progressed and the year progressed, we actually made it quite far and we lost in a playoff game and we're done for the season. And as a coach, I had felt that I had let the team down. You you want them to win, you want them to find success. And uh, our goal is to win the championship and we didn't actually do that. And I was kind of, Bummed out about it because I wanted those uh, that team to feel that success. And as we're sitting there in the stands watching a game, a kid who didn't play that much, he turned to me and he see you're a good coach. And I heard him and I didn't say anything. And I started crying and thinking about how, you know, we had goals set out as a team but there's so much more that I wanted that team to experience that went beyond winning a championship. And in that moment, it validated a lot of my hopes for what that team represented. And it made a difference. And you think about all of the things that educators say that really stick with kids, but there are sometimes things that our kids say that really stick with educators and that one made an impact. And I want you to, as you're listening to this, we can think about all the negative things that, you know, you hear in education, but think about, and I hope there's more, you know, one or two situations where, you know, a a student or a family said something that really appreciated you and know that probably a, a thousand times more you'd hear compliments but a lot of times people just don't share good things that we think about it with google reviews a lot of times you have amazing service um in businesses we go to and we say nothing but when something goes wrong people tend to say stuff and it's something we need to get better at as a society and i would just want you to think about the times you've heard that from a student from a family and times it by a thousand, because a lot of people think that about what you do in education. And uh, Dr. Whitbeck really reminded me of that. And I'm glad she made me sit and reflect and think about that impact. Because you don't, you know, there's a lot of things that we could have done better. We could have grown. But um, as long as you care, you're probably making an impact. So uh, I leave you with that as you enter this podcast with Dr. Whitbeck. It's absolutely amazing. She's an incredible leader. Thank you so much for joining me. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey 
Hey everyone, this is George Cross. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I am so blessed today to have Dr. Christy Whitbeck, and I apologize, Dr. Christy Whitbeck uh, from Fort Bend ISD. She is the superintendent there, and I am so blessed and excited to actually uh, work with your leadership team. And as I shared in our earlier podcast, um, just how wonderful uh, your team and it's such a representation of you, how welcoming and kind and uh, um, really visionary in, in the work that they're actually doing. So I'm blessed to, to not only be able to share some of my ideas with you, but uh, to learn from your school district as well. And as I talked to Dr. Whitbeck today, um, not only is she a superintendent, but you know, I, I've, I've read articles, I've seen like incredible work that you've done with, you know, districts before uh, your time in Fort Bend ISD. I learned that she's basically open schools at the elementary, middle and high school level, which is absolutely incredible, as well as distinguished career um, as a teacher. So Dr. Wayback, thank you so much for taking uh, time out of your extremely busy day um, to join me to be on the podcast. If you could just tell everyone a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you do today and how you got there, I think it's a great place to start. Well, sure. Um, I am. I'm a career educator. I started as a first grade teacher and then I got promoted to teach second grade. And then I was a reading specialist at elementary and moved into the assistant principalship elementary and then elementary principal of a title one school. And then um, my district asked me to open a new elementary school. It was non-title. And I did that. And then I opened it at new junior high and then a new high school. So I stayed principal for quite a few years during that stretch, which I'm looking back very grateful for. Then I became an assistant superintendent over all um, academics. And then I became deputy superintendent right here in Fort Bend, where I am now. That was from 2013 to 17. So I was kind of number two uh, in this very big and, and thriving district in the Houston area. And then uh, I was ready to be superintendent and I got the position in Bryan ISD, which is in Agadland, and went there and was superintendent for four and a half years. loved it. And then uh, the opening in Fort Bend occurred and uh, the recruiters called me and, you know, one thing led to another and here I am. So now I'm superintendent here in Fort Bend and we have 80,000 kids. We have over 12,000 employees. We're um, beautifully diverse. Uh, we stretch uh, along uh, Houston and we're some, somewhat a little urban and also suburban. Uh, so we just have a nice mix of kids and uh, clientele and uh, it's just a, an amazing district. So that's, so I've had, you know, that career, I'm literally like that, that little first grade teacher that if you look at the resume, it looks kind of like stair steps. So uh, I guess it was somewhat intentional along the way, but I didn't really know that I'd end up here uh, in the sixth largest district in the state of Texas, but I'm proud to be here. Yeah, well, I think that the people I've talked to that know you are, are not surprised that you're there, um, you know, from the, the work that you've done in the past. So um, obviously, that's a credit to you. And one of the things that uh, I really want to ask to you because a lot of times, you know, someone's in the same district and they, they move up and, you know, they tend, you know, they can go to the superintendent position, but you actually, as you mentioned, you, you exited Fort Bend, um, went away to another school district. I know you had great success there and then came back to Fort Bend. What was that experience? Like, how did that benefit you to actually, um, you know, leave the district and learn, you know, probably had different experiences, different things. How did that, you know, help, um, as you came back to, to Fort Bend, like, what was that experience like? Well, I think that, uh, Brian was a, a community of 16,000 students, 23 campuses. So uh, I got to learn how to be a superintendent and how to, mm -hmm. how to affect change and raise academics and pass a bond and do pass a TRE. And I, I got to learn all of those things while I was in the top chair. So then when you come back to, a top chair that's even bigger, you at least have led. And, and I think my parallel here is by being an elementary principal, then I went to a junior high. I had never taught junior high, but I knew how to lead, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then the same thing happened to me when I went to high school. I was never a high school teacher, uh, but I knew how to lead. And, and the interesting thing is kids are kids. Mm -hmm. And what I learned is teachers are teachers. Now they have their nuances, but everybody just wants someone who cares and who's got the energy to really understand and listen and get into the issues, help them solve problems, whatever those problems are. 
And I had the unique opportunity of graduating students that I was actually their elementary principal. And they would say things to me and I would say things to them like, hey, I remember when you did this and they couldn't believe it that I could remember that. But I did. And uh, so relationships, uh, all of those things are just so important. Uh, but for me, I think getting that great big picture has has served me well. Uh, I kind of joke around and say, you know, I can speak 100 languages. I, I can speak <laughs> kindergarten. I can speak, you know, UIL for this sports. I can speak, you know, uh, whatever comp ed, I can speak career technology, you know, whatever we need to talk about. I, I have a pretty good grasp on it. And so I'm not a know-it-all though. I need all the experts in the fields, uh, but I can at least, um, I can, I can hold my own at the table. <laughs> I love that. And that, you know, one of the things, and I, I have the, I have the privilege of working with school districts, um, you know, all over the country, all over North America, I've done it, you know, internationally. And sometimes the uh, what happens is they'll split up the groups to high school and and then you have an elementary middle school or they'll go elementary middle school high school and they'll separate them. And I always say, like, if I can advise against that, because I think that sometimes we separate um, the staff that they, you know, you hear elementary teachers like, oh, you get to teach the same class, you know, five times a day. And then you hear high school say like, oh, well, elementary is with the same group of kids all day. And I said, well, yeah, there's some there's obviously some differences, but there's a lot that we can actually learn from each other. And I think, you know, combining the, the groups has been really beneficial. And and so they, they kind of see that some of the, the struggles they have are the same and some of the solutions that the elementary people uh, use on the daily can help high school people and vice versa. And I think there's there's a real there's a real power in that. Uh, you, you'd mentioned that, you know, you started teaching grade one and there's probably someone who is a, you know, elementary teacher right now and maybe never sees himself in a superintendent position and maybe never see themselves in a leadership position. I know somebody, um, as you mentioned in the last podcast, saw that in you. And so how, how do you know that's part of your career path? Like where do where do you kind of like what happens there? Because I think a lot of times, um, you know, a lot of people that go into positions like yours never see themselves in it. And then all of a sudden they're superintendent. So like, how, how, how does that actually, how did that align for you? And, and how do you, you know, somebody listening to this that says, you know, leadership's not for me. Um, is there a way that they can see something different, a different path for them that they might want to go into leadership one day? Well, um, as I mentioned in the last podcast, sometimes it starts when you're younger too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like I think in sixth grade, I was elected mayor of my class. Okay. Uh, that was a little something, but the high school experience of my, yeah. my student council sponsor encouraging me in leadership. But I will tell you that I think we have to keep our eyes and ears open to both the examples and the non-examples. So true mm -hmm. story, when I was a first grade teacher, uh, I was, you know, I love to do motivational things with my kids. And one of the things I did was we did a little activity um, that we all worked toward called I Read 50 Books. And I had t-shirts made and had a big 50 on them. I read 50 books. And about every time about six or seven kids would reach the mark, then we would have a little ceremony. So that way the kids, they didn't, nobody felt bad. We were just celebrating these and they read a little, um, a little, um, insert of their favorite book or excerpt, I should say. Um, and then we invited their parents with cookies and little fives and zeros that I handmade at night. But here's my non-example. My principal, his office was probably 50 feet from my classroom. Mm. And I asked him to come and to say a few words and to shake the children's hands. And I probably had, I had about 30 kids in the room. I probably had five ceremonies. He never made it to any of them. And I remember saying to myself, I can do better than that mm. because I care. And one time I walked and when it was over, I walked down the hall and I saw he was on the phone. And so it wasn't like there was an emergency or anything like that, which I would have understood. But I think I think I learned too how important it is that you you connect even as a principal and and i that that motivated me. it was my very first year of teaching and and that motivated me and i've never forgotten that and so each each step along the way like you were describing 
you know, you were a fun principal. I mean, I was, I rollerbladed throughout my schools and did fun stuff. I had golf carts before golf carts were the thing uh, in my secondary schools and would roll around. And uh, I, I always did, you know, just fun pep rallies, fun things. And I, I think, I think kids want to be somewhere that's exciting and I need to hire people with that kind of mindset. And so, you know, I think I just, I, I just think that, that it's critical, but we do learn from our non-example. Right. Well, <laughs> I won't you, say his name, yeah, well, but I remember it. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure you do. And that, that, uh, when you just said that, like my stomach dropped, right? Like that, that's just, you know, especially like you, you're just new. Right. And so like, what does that Brand say? New. And, and so when they're, um, so when I talk to some educators about, um, you know, they're uh, like, I'll tap them on the shoulder and say like, oh, you really need to consider leadership. Right. And actually I, like uh, someone I was thinking about, um, who, who's actually in the Houston area. And she said, you know, I, you know, I don't really see myself. I don't want to do, you know, the things that my principal does. I'm like the beauty of being in the principalship, you have a lot of leeway to make it the thing that you want it to be that you don't have to do what the person's done. And like, as you said, those non examples, uh, really shift. And I've asked educators forever, um, to really consider the question, would you want to be a learner in your own classroom and not to like, think, well, I would like the way I teach, but really kind of understand the people you serve and move backwards from there. And I think the same question applies, you know, to administrators, like, would you want to be in a building that you lead, right? Like, would you want to be in that space? So I think those non examples, uh, really can drive a lot of people to create something better, not to like scare them out of a job. But, you know, I love that you shared that, like, <laughs> like I could do better than that right away. And, <laughs> yeah. and now you have. So, yeah, um, I might make a hundred mistakes, but right. I'm going to take a minute and come in and shake some six year olds hands sure. who have read 50 books. <laughs> you, and, because and, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> and what's beautiful is that if you do that, you can make a hundred mistakes. Do you know what I mean? Like that, that gives you leeway because it gives you a credibility because it, it says to the people you serve that what you're doing is really important. Right. And like this call can wait. And there's, I, I just, you know, that, I don't know, it bugged me a little bit. I like, I, I don't, that, that, you know, that's, that's sad that, you know, I, I hate that, you know, you felt that, but I'm glad you turned it into to something really positive. And when we were talking before, and you shared this when we we had met um, as we were planning for July, um, you, you really kind of focus on this idea of know your impact. And this is a, a big theme for you in Fort Bend ISD. And I know something that you take really personally. Can you tell us a little bit about that, what, what you mean by know your impact and, and why it's so important to the work that you do today? Well, first of all, I think there's never been a time, at least in my career, where it's more important that we let teachers and educators know the impact that they're making. Uh, a lot of people have retired early after COVID. They've left the profession. They're stressed out by student behaviors that are different than prior to COVID. So we've had all of that that's impacted our profession somewhat negatively. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to let them know they make a difference. So we started with our theme. And then I shared with you about Virtus Wilson reaching out to me. And so when he did that and I connected with him, then I thought, wow, he's let me know I made that impact on him um, just by my kindness and look, finding him. And because back in the day, we didn't know where kids went. I had to get the phone number, talk to the grandmother, get permission to drive out there, pick him up. And it was a whole different thing just so I could have closure. So he could have closure yeah. because that's not healthy for kids. But what it made me think of is what am I doing to let educators know that made a difference to me? So I reached out to a woman named Pauline Barker. And she was my supervising teacher, in Missouri State, when I was in college. And she was a second grade teacher. And that's where I did my student teaching. And her classroom was just so fun. And she was so positive. And I stayed in touch with her for a while. But then I lost touch. And it made me think, I wonder if I can find her. And mm -hmm. so I went through the Alumni Association and found her because the lab school was on campus. So it was connected to the university. And uh, they would only reach out to her with my name. They wouldn't obviously let me have her number. So that mm -hmm. took a while. But one day my phone rings and it's her. And we had the best conversation and she remembered me. And uh, just, she, was, she was most proud, honestly 
not so much that I was a superintendent, but that I got a doctorate. <laughs> That's what she was proud of, that I went on with my education. And um, But here's what she said to me, and I think this is so powerful, and I've told this to my staff. She said how much it meant that I reached out and told her she made a difference. She She taught me how to teach. And I'm still teaching today. It's just that my classroom is ginormous. And um, she said, you know, when you're 83, no one tells you that you made a difference much anymore. And I'll never forget her saying that to me on the phone. And so I've written her several times and I've sent her some communications from our school district. And uh, just always, I always say, you, I told her about who's your Virtus that I asked my leaders Who's your Mrs. Barker? Because I want them to tell me, hey, who are you reaching out to? It's not just about us sitting around and waiting on a child to tell us we made a difference. It's about what are we doing for that pay it forward moment? And so we spend a lot of time, every leadership meeting, we do that. She is so proud of that. She is so proud of that. And so um, she's Mrs. Barker and uh, she, she taught me how to teach. And I'm forever grateful. That's amazing. I love how you, I love how you take these things from your past and really, you know, help you to move forward in the future. And uh, one of the reasons that I brought people together to write because of a teacher is because I I felt like everyone knows this. There's that two week period in March of 2020 where everyone loved teachers, you know, and then the two weeks ended, and then it was just nasty after that. And I I I felt that there are so many teachers that people have shown them appreciation, but only like a, a millionth of the appreciation that they deserve. And I'm not saying like in a fake and inauthentic way, I'm talking that too often, we have these really great things to say about the teachers of our past, the ones that have really inspired us, but they never hear it. We lose contact with them. We don't think about how much impact. And so I love that, you know, you reached out because not only did that probably make a huge impact on Mrs. Barker, but Obviously, you sharing that story encourage other people. So everyone, I'm going to challenge you that you're listening to this um, to take that time to reach out to a former educator, whether they're still teaching or not, because I think we need to hear that. And the thing that I learned over COVID, and I, this is the biggest lesson um, for me, is that we need to show gratitude way too early rather than way too late, because there's never a detriment of being early on it, right? But there is, never. there can be a loss of um, of something when we don't share it late enough. And so as we end, I really want to go visit her. I got to yeah. figure out how to go visit her, you know, so I can go get a picture and, and just have a sit down conversation. She's in the state of Missouri. So I got to figure that out. But well, um, you got to share this podcast try. with her, right? You got to share this podcast with her. So and hopefully I can if, do that. And if she's and if she's in the comments on YouTube, I, we want to hear from you. So I'd love to <laughs> hear how Dr. Whitbeck goes when you, when you worked with her. So um, he, here's the last question I have as um, we're ending off, you know, uh, this school year. And we're going into the the new school year, 2023, 2024, and it just goes so fast, right? Um, what are your hopes for Fort Ben ISD as you go into this new school year? And I know you want everyone to take a break and relax and, you know, we're not jumping onto this, but like, what do you kind of envision as the hopes for this next year coming up? Well, my hopes are that, uh, you know, we've got some some business type hopes. We're going to we're going to need to navigate through legislative decisions that are pending right now in Texas. And some of them I'm concerned about. And so I, I hope that we and I'm confident we will navigate through and be successful. But my my hope is that we continue letting teachers and educators know the impact that they're making. And we're going to have a focus on choosing to care. And so what I hope is that every single child and employee in Fort Bend is touched and knows that someone is there for them. Someone will help them. They'll guide them. They will provide the support that they need that everybody knows there's someone they can go to. Mm. And I, and we have to work on that because we're a very large organization. And so I'm trying to take a mindset and, and filter it down to a hundred different facilities that we mm. have at this, at, in this size of a district, but I believe it can be done. And that's, that's first and foremost, I want our parents to be proud to send their kids to Fort Bend ISD schools and to, uh, to just uh, be a part of the process 
collaborate with us so we can just get better. One of the favorite lines I, I remember hearing years ago, and I've never forgotten it, is you don't have to be sick to get better. Mm. And so we got to constantly kind of work on ourselves, constantly work. And so I want to be a, a an organization that believes in lifelong learning and that believes in um, trying to always get better, not from a pressure cooker mindset, mm -hmm. but just from a self-satisfaction mindset. And oh. I, I have to find my words because next week I, I'll do 11 graduations. And so I'll have some kind of a comment along that line, very short though, and succinct uh, to my students. But it's, it's just so important that, that they know someone cares. You know, you know, I've, I've had the privilege to work with so many different school districts and there's the, there's a common thread in the best organizations and you're, you're embodying it in what you're saying right now is that they ensure that people feel valued and you can tell your focus on relationships and community and how important that actually is to you. And that trickles down, you know, throughout your organization and just the interactions I've had, but once you, the organizations that I've seen have struggled are the ones that like, we're, we're good. We don't need to do anything more. Like we've, we've basically attained. And once you do that, you're already falling behind. And so they're always looking like, Hey, we're doing great stuff. We're appreciating this, but we always need to grow because that's what we ask of our kids. And so how can we actually ask that of the people we serve when we're not doing that ourselves? And so I'm really excited to uh, learn with you and just, you know, the incredible stories coming out of Fort Bend ISD. Uh, I'm glad that you, you, I'm, I'm really appreciative that you took the time, um, to share some of your stories, some of the stories from your school district. And I cannot wait to, to meet your, your staff in person. So thank you so much for being on here. And, uh, really, I, I really appreciate your time. And thank you for, uh, writing and thinking of because of a teacher, because, you know, that is, that's our, that's our why right there. I mean, there's not a successful adult today that didn't have a teacher somewhere along the way that, that loved on them and guided them through. And so you, you really sparked that. So thank you. And I look forward to the partnership as well. I love that. Well, thank you everyone for listening. Dr. Whitbeck, thank you so much. I hope everyone, you have a wonderful day.